Let's take a look at how Vectorworks Landmark can help you design to a budget. Here I have an intelligent object from within Landmark. This is referred to as a hardscape, and this object has a built-in unit price. Again, I have another intelligent object, this time a landscape area, also with a built-in unit price. By designing with these intelligent objects, I can in fact create a design and analyze the budget at the same time. Let's start by creating another hardscape. This time I have a saved hardscape this is going to be a bluestone patio. Again, this particular hardscape also has a built-in unit price. Once I've completed the design, I can use that unit price, multiplying it by the information that Vectorworks Landmark provides, such as the area or the linear foot of border stone, to create an overall budget or cost analysis for this particular patio. In this case, I'm using some nice tools built within Vectorworks Landmark that allows me to create what will end up being a pretty complicated patio, all with one easy action. For example, this feature, which is new in Vectorworks 2009, allows me to create another R component that is tangent to the previous one. This is a nice sweeping S, something that would be very difficult to do previously. With the patio now complete, I can report on information for example, if I just simply add a tag, I can take a look at this blue stone patio and analyze the main area, the border area, and the perimeter. Here you can see that information displayed on the tag, and I'll just change the font to match the other tags already in my design. Now at this time, all of this information is being stored. It's actually being held in a database from within Landmark. To reveal the information, I might take a look at a built-in worksheet. This hardscape budget is showing me all of my hardscapes, and by simply recalculating, I can now see the blue stone patio. Notice that the price per square foot is set to $28. I can change that to $34 a square foot, and that change is not only made here in the worksheet, but also updated in my, de my design. If I reveal the database header fields, you can see that all of this information is reporting right on the hardscape. For example, I have the main area plus the border area to give me the total area for the hardscape. And by simply multiplying those fields, I can create my overall budget. Again, there's also the same capability with the landscape area feature. And by simply creating another worksheet that adds up the plant list budget, the landscape area budget, and the hardscape budget, I can reveal my total project cost. Now this one cell worksheet, I can go ahead and then add to my document just by dragging and dropping. Now this little piece of information will then be there while I design. I can add new information, I can change information, and my budget will dynamically update, and this number will reflect that. So let's go ahead and add some additional information to the design. So for example, I'm going to add a mulch bed. Again, I'm using the landscape area tool, which is a nice new tool in Vectorworks Landmark 2009. And what I can do is roughly get the area that I'd like to create this mulch bed. Now I'm going to also have a mulch bed in this area up here. I don't have to be too precise with my clicks because what I can actually do is just create an overall shape and then just by simply sending this to the back so that it's behind my bluestone patio, I can do a clip surface command which will change the shape and actually limit it to the exact area that I need. Now what I'm doing right now is just to orient the tag in the correct location. I might also choose to give it a different graphical appearance so I can give it a mulch texture for 3D and then a mulch hatch uh, which would be appropriate for 2D. So again I'll send this to the back and then by simply selecting the bluestone patio at the same time I've got two objects I can do the clip surface command and then the end result is going to be two different landscape areas that's very precisely created to match the contours of the existing patio. If I had to try and redraw those arcs perfectly, that would be a relatively difficult task, but fortunately Landmark makes it easy with that clip surface command. Now these two mulch beds have their own separate tags, and you can see that the square footage is being represented accurately for both. And just as with the hardscape, the landscape areas also have a unit cost, so by multiplying that times the square footage, my budget is constantly updating. Let's take a look at the plants. I have some plants already created, but I can change it at this time to affect the budget. So for example, this grouping of Happy Returns Daylilies, 
uh, is created using the plant tool, kind of using it in, an, in a mass insertion mode. So by just changing the shape of the overall mass, I'm actually adding more plants to the design. Now that change is reflected automatically in the plant tag, and if I just right click and recalculate my budget item, you can see that the couple of additional daylilies does impact my budget. I can also go ahead and select a boxwood, for example. You can take a look at the information that you can assign to the plants, such as the schedule size, the SKU, and then of course the price. I also have a 3D representation, and by just simply using the plant tool, I can place these boxwoods and get a very accurate depiction in both 2D and 3D, as well as an accurate depiction of the effect on the budget by just simply executing the one command. So in this particular example, by putting these boxwoods on the outside of my design, I've uh, in fact created a situation where I've got 27 individual boxwoods, and I have a unit cost of $75 per boxwood. That's the installed price to affect my, my budget. If I change the spacing, for example, if I make them a little bit wider, I now have 21, and then right-click the budget item to see the new number. Again, I'm at 19,775. If I go back and set that to two foot spacing, I have a couple more boxwoods. A recalculate shows me the immediate budgetary impact of such a change. At this time, my budget's 20,225. Let's say that's over budget and I want to make some changes to the design to bring it down below 15,000. What I'm doing now is just by simply dragging and dropping a paver patio style, I then can use the eyedropper tool to paste those attributes on top of my existing bluestone patio. So the end result is something that not only looks like a paver patio, of course this is both in 2D and later I'll show you in 3D, but more importantly it reports information on this particular patio knowing that it's a paver. So again, the tags update, but more importantly, the unit cost for a paver patio would be much less than flag on concrete. So when I recalculate my budget, I see that change instantly. I can also take this loose stone area, which currently resides under the entire deck, and just by using the trim tool, I can cut it back to an area that resides just under the air conditioning unit. So that's 46 square feet, as opposed to the much larger size, getting my budget below 15,000. At this time, my design is complete and on budget, so what I can do is create my client presentation. Because I'm using Vectorworks Landmark, all of this is built right in. So for example, what I've done is set up a sheet layer. This is an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper that will print my planting plan. Maybe to complete my presentation, I can drag and drop some JPEGs that I've found on the internet to, to represent the different plant material, as well as just to give an idea of what this Trex deck might actually look like. This is an easy function, and in fact, dragging and dropping is a new capability in version 2009. I can also use another sheet layer, for example, to show the site plan. Now this is the same information that I showed previously, only shown now at a different scale, and with all of the color turned off. In fact, you can see on this enlarged site plan area, I have quite a nice, almost a pencil style rendering, perfect for getting a permit. On my budget sheet layer, I have an 8.5 by 11 sheet that I can now drag and drop some of these budget items. So for example, this is the plant list budget, which again uses the unit cost per plant, multiplying that by the quantity, and then displaying the total cost. I can also drag and drop my landscape area, which would represent my mulch and uh, loose stone areas, and then of course the pavers uh, and the budget associated with that. Lastly, I can drag that budgetary item that we created, that one cell worksheet, just to simply display the total cost. And at this point, I have a, a sheet that I can use as my proposal that I can actually export for my client. In fact, a nice capability in Vectorworks Landmark is the ability to batch export your sheets as a PDF. So for example, I can select all three of these sheets and then export them and save them in a PDF file. Of course, there's lots of advantages to using a PDF file. The first of which is that my graphics will print just as smoothly as if I printed it from within Vectorworks. You can also add security measures to PDF files, so you can password protect them, or you can prevent them from being printed. Now let's go back into Vectorworks and take a look at what else we can export. For example, I've created a worksheet that's been formatted slightly differently than my budgets. In this particular case, I've removed all the headers and displayed just the ID, the quantity, and then the common name. This worksheet can now be exported. The export worksheet function allows you to save files as comma, tab, or other types of file formats. Using a tab delimited format, I can save this file to my hard drive and then import that into Excel 
or even my accounting or estimating system. To complete my client presentation, I may want to show them 3D renderings. Because much of what I've already done has 3D information, I can simply switch to a 3D view to preview that. So for example, here my plants, my mulch beds, landscape areas, and hardscapes are all displaying as I would expect them to in 3D. I can use the flyover tool to create an interactive presentation for my client. I can also create static renderings of a very high quality nature. Now in this particular example, the only thing that I've modeled in 3D were the deck sides and rails as well as the fence. Everything else is automatically generated from the intelligent objects that I've shown you. Here you can see some nice high quality photorealistic renderings produced directly from within Landmark. When compared to photographs of the actual project as it was built, you can see the client gets a really strong idea of exactly what you're attempting to propose and gives you a competitive advantage over the rest.